what to see, what to stream, and what to skip. It's Movie Reviews with Ryan J. It sure is, and we are back with the nationally syndicated entertainment critic and always jolly Ryan J. Good morning. Good morning, Tip. It's so great to see you. Great to see you, too. I know you got some good ones for us this morning. We teased it earlier about this first one, Spider-Man. It's PG-13 in theaters. No Way Home. It's the third Tom Holland standalone Spider-Man film. He's been in a couple of Avengers also. And a lot of Doctor Strange is featured in this one. I love uh, Benedict Cumberbatch in that role. He's the wizard in the series, so it's a lot of fun. Where does this fit in the whole Marvel Universe series? Honey, I can't even begin to tell you. Between all the Disney Plus streaming shows and all the other <laughs> movies and the Eternals now and everything else, it's so intricate. I am not that big of a geek into Marvel. It is a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm a little confused at the beginning of this. Maybe you want to rewatch some of the last ones, but I did find my way through. It's so great. Tom Holland is just so great. I love Zendaya. You've got all these villains from previous Spider-Man movies that come back in there like the Spider-Verse cracks open in this one which we've seen animated but never in a live action film before. Okay I feel like some of these like end up being kind of funny like they've got good humor was this one in that category? What I think Marvel does so well is that the action, while it's continuing and is so great, you also have comedy just really quickly infused without cracking the action, without breaking the timing of anything. So it is consistently funny and full speed ahead. Okay, I don't know if I'm buying all this action stuff, though. Did you? I did. I love the effects. I mean, the CGI is so seamless today. Like, you really can't tell what CGI and what isn't. It's just so great. And possible spoiler alert, but there is a Spider-Man trifecta here that is so amazing that makes it one of the best Marvel movies I've ever seen. Um, you just got to check it out in the theater. It's so much fun. I had so much fun watching this. I was just, I think, beaming the whole time. Oh, okay. That's a great review. I love that. All right. The next one is Nightmare Alley. This is rated R in theaters as well. Right, and this is writer-director Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, and it's the question of how do you follow up your Oscar win, right? He won for The Shape of Water, Best Picture, and so how do you do, what do you do next? And this is the answer. It's Nightmare Alley, and it's different for him in tone and in story. He normally does very dark fantasy. He has a lot of like, creature work and things like that. This doesn't have it. This is more of just a, a drama. Okay, who's all in this? We've got Bradley Cooper, Kate Blanchett, Rooney Mara, Willem Dafoe, Tony Collette, a lot more. It's this really stacked cast. Wow, it sure is. Okay, so how does the story flow? It's pretty good. I mean, you've got the typical design noir stylized look that you expect from a Del Toro film, but I was very confused. There's really not much of a story for like the first hour. You don't understand what the goal is of the character, why the story is even being told. So while it looks really great, you're kind of waiting for there to be some stakes or for something to really happen or some backstory for some of these characters to really care. It's the first time I really felt that way for a Del Toro movie. I mean, I love Pan's Labyrinth. I love Crimson Peak. I rewatched those. This one I would not watch again. I'd say stream it. It's not a must-see on the big screen. Although Bradley Cooper looks like a must-see in that, so... <laughs> He's a must see and everything. Come on. I know. Those he looks eyes. super handsome there. Okay, good to know. All right. Um, you got to interview someone as well. Right. Nick Kroll, who he voices Gunter, the big pig in Sing 2, which is coming out <laughs> next week. I caught up with him recently. Take a look. Cute. Is this kind of movie as much fun to make as it is for the rest of us to watch? It, it really is. It's funny and it's emotional. And so... Every time you go into the booth, you know you're going to get to do some fun stuff and be a part of something that eventually uh, will be a hopefully really entertaining and joyful film. And I, and I really think these movies are are those things. So did you do any like special vocal warm ups for Gunter? Yeah, I do some warm ups. You're you're supposed to like. Uh, there's a lot of that. A lot of wow. You're supposed to tire out your tongue and your jaw, and then I drink like gallons of tea while I'm recording. I need big shows, big ideas. Hey, I have a big one with Clay Calloway. Whoa, 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 you know Calloway? Could you answer this next question with Gunter's voice? I think it'll depend on the question. <laughs> Gunter, would you argue that you are the driving creative force in Sing 2? I would argue that you should never put a balloon inside of a microwave because it might deflate your ego too much. Um, that's what I would say. That's so awesome. Thank you. Oh, that was he's great. So, 
He's so funny. And, and Sing 2 is in theaters Wednesday, December 22nd. I will be here that day because for holiday movies opening that week, uh, that day next week, I'll be here to review the uh, review it then. I love it. Can you imagine if people referred to you as, hey, the big pig? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I bet he wears that as a badge of honor, to be I honest. I bet he does, too. He was fantastic. That was cool. And I love those warm-ups. Okay, your last one here, Swan Song, rated R. This is Apple TV+. Plus. This is, and this is a sci-fi drama uh, that makes it kind of ask the question, what would you do if you could live forever? It's a moral dilemma, and would you choose, but what if it's not how you imagine it to be? Oh, I love this. Okay, who's in it? We have uh, Oscar winner Mahershala Ali. We have Glenn Close. There is also Aquafina, who I really enjoy. And the one thing that I was a little disappointed about in this movie is it reminded me at the beginning in terms of premise of Ex Machina, which one of, is mm. one of my favorite AI movies. You've seen that film, right? Yes, and we're almost out yeah. of time. Brilliant. Well, this one doesn't go into the thriller version. It just stays kind of sad and, and slow. But I love these performances. It's still a really interesting moral in, uh, moral dilemma situation. So I'd say stream it if you have Apple TV+. Plus. I totally want to see that. I just wouldn't want to live forever if everybody else died, you know. Oh, that's know. true. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, you too, Tiff. And you can like Ryan J on Facebook, follow him on Instagram and Twitter, and for his full entertainment reviews, check out his website, ryanjreviews.com.